In this video, I'm going to show you a simple and easy way to prove the quotient rule using just the product rule. And obviously, we're going to assume that the product rule is true because we're deriving the quotient rule from the product rule. And what the product rule tells you is that for two functions, f and g, the derivative of those two multiplied together, or the product of those two, is simply your derivative of function f multiplied by function g unchanged plus function f multiplied by the derivative of function g. These dashes tell you that we mean the derivative. So we want to find the derivative of f of x divided by g of x. This is a quotient because it's a division. However, you can't use the quotient rule to find that because the point is to prove the quotient rule. What you can do is rewrite this in a way that makes it look like a product, or rather make it into a product. So what we can do is take this g of x, move it to the top by changing it to a minus 1 power, and so we have f of x multiplied by g of x to the minus 1. This is a product. There's a multiplication here. And we've assumed that the product rule is true, so we could use the product rule to find the derivative. The difficulty here is that this function isn't so easy to find the derivative of. So we need to find this derivative, and we can use that later. So let's look over here at this derivative. So to find it, you will need to use the chain rule. So let's go step by step through how you use the chain rule. So the first thing you need to do is look at the outside function. So we're going to look at this minus 1. This is going to come to the front. And then you're going to subtract 1 from the power, giving you g of x to the minus 2. This is the derivative of the outside function. Then we need to look at the inside function, g of x. And the derivative of g of x is simply g dash of x. So all of this multiplied together is going to be our derivative. Obviously, we can just simplify that. And instead of writing minus 1, we just put a minus out front. So we've now got our derivative that's going to cause a little bit of problems. So this is the most complicated bit, really. We've got the product rule. So we can just go step by step through the product rule for this function. So we want to find the derivative using the product rule. So we start by finding f dash, which is simply the function f of, x, f, f of x with a dash on it. Then what we want to do is just times that by um, our function g, which in this case is g of x to the minus 1. Then we would simply do f of x multiplied by the derivative of this function, which is going to be our g dash. We already found this earlier. So we just do that substitution. We now have part of the way to the answer. However, this is obviously quite um, messy, and we have to do some tidying up of this. So what we should look at is any common factors. And it turns out that we could use this as a factor, g of x to the minus 2. So if we take that out, we can factorize that. And then the first term is going to be now, g of x to the minus 2 times this here. So minus 2 plus 1 is going to give the minus 1 there. And then we can simply take this out um, as a factor. And we've got this expression here. This simplifies it quite nicely. And there's a reason that we've taken the factor of minus 2 out. And you'll see just in a second that if we take this and move it to the bottom, this looks like the expression for the quotient rule. You may have seen this written in terms of u and v, which is another way of writing it. So let's look at how you can do that. So I'm going to let u be f of x, and v is going to be g of x. And what we can do is just go through step by step and do some substitutions, because we know that u dash is going to be f of x, f dash of x, and v dash is going to be g dash of x. Then what you can do is simply substitute each of these into the appropriate place in this expression here. So for example, f dash of x is going to be equal to u dash, and then g of x is going to be equal to v. So you just do that substitution, and then so on through all of the terms, replacing them with those in this part here. And that will give you perhaps an expression that is more familiar. So I hope this video has been helpful to you, and you can now prove the quotient rule. Finally, if this video did help you, please subscribe below and thank you very much for watching.